August 5th, 1975, Stevie Wonder agreed to a seven-year, seven-album contract with Motown Records that was to pay out $37 million. Looking at it now, that's not a whole lot of money. But back then, that was groundbreaking. But there's some things that you have to understand about Stevie and this contract. His first record contract was in 1961 at the age of 11 years old. From 1968 to 1974, he had released at least one album per year. And at the age of 25, in 1975, Stevie's contract with Motown expired. And he was talking about quitting music altogether. After some negotiation, Stevie received his new contract with a $13 million advance 20% royalties and full control of his publishing. It also gave him creative freedom to do whatever he wanted. And boy, did he ever. In 1976, one year after this contract was signed, he released his epic album, Songs in the Key of Life. It's in the National Recording Registry of the Library of Congress because it was that significant. It was only the second best-selling album of 1977 behind another iconic album, Fleetwood Mac's Rumors. His next album after that was Journey Through the Secret Life of Plants, a soundtrack in 1979. While this album wasn't much of a commercial success, it was groundbreaking in the sounds and keyboards that Stevie used. This was the first use of a digital sampling synthesizer, the Computer Music Melodeon. His follow-up, Hotter Than July, in 1980, featured more hits, Master Blaster, Jammin', as well as Happy Birthday, which is a tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. All in all, Stevie released those three albums of new music, as well as Looking Back and Stevie Wonder's original Musicquarium compilation albums. Stevie Wonder is one of the musical geniuses of the late 20th century. His place is firmly sealed in the pantheon of musical greats. If you have only listened to just his hits, go listen to the entirety of Songs in the Key of Life or Inner Visions or Hotter Than July and you'll understand his musical genius. <laughs> 